This video is about thinking a little bit different about the game of tennis. We normally think about playing tennis as learning to hit different strokes. The problem with that is that it should be really the opposite. We should really be thinking about learning to play tennis as strategy first and the strokes as tools to help us use that strategy. What do I mean? Well, really the goal of the game is to learn to do everything that you can to beat an opponent. That means that if I was just imagining how I would play, I would want to serve to a certain spot at a certain speed in order to get my opponent off the court and then I would want to take the next ball and hit it into the corner on the other side. If the opponent gets it back, I would want to be able to come to the net and maybe hit a short volley. So really, I have a clear picture in my head of what needs to be done or what I would like to do and then what I need to do is I need to figure out technically how to do those things. That is really how you should approach the game. You should ask yourself, what do I want to do? And then, okay, so how do I do that? As opposed to the other way around. Let's work on my forehands or my backhands or my serve and then kind of worry about how to put it in practice. So take a look at your game and try to think about what do I really want to be able to do? And then, okay, how do I do that? And the main problem with thinking about technique as a pattern that I need to master, it just uh, limits us. Because really the objective of technique is not to master a certain pattern. It's really to be able to handle every type of ball that comes to us. So if the opponent hits it high, if the opponent hits it fast, if the opponent makes us run, if they hit with a lot of spin, we should be able to handle that ball and hit it back to them with the desired combination of speed, direction, height, length, and spin. So really the goal of technical training should be to develop stroke flexibility. That means strokes are flexible enough to handle the incoming ball and to shoot it back with the desired combination of uh, height, speed, spin, etc. So that is really the objective of technical training, not to have the wrist at a perfect 45 degree and to have my body rotate exactly to a certain spot. Obviously, there are some fundamentals in the technique. But the goal is to develop flexibility within those fundamentals. The problem is that most people go to tennis practice and they're thinking that, okay, I'm going to practice my forehand. So I have this picture in my mind of how I want to hit it. And then I'm going to try to hit that ball over and over and over with that picture and correct a little bit what I'm doing and change it to match that picture that I have in my head. The problem with that is that you're getting a lot of repetition of the same kind of shot, the same kind of ball. And that is not what tennis is all about. In tennis, every time you receive a ball, it comes differently. And you have to adapt. And also every time that you send a ball, you should be able to hit it also differently. It's not always the same shot. So you don't always finish here. You sometimes finish here on the forehand. You sometimes finish here on the forehand. You sometimes finish here. It really depends what you're trying to do. And that is what you need to develop to be a, a good player. So in order to do that, you have to think about your practices as being a lot more variable. That means that you want a lot of repetition, but you want the repetition to be variable. What does that mean? Well, to just give you an example of it, if I want to improve my forehand, all right, so I'm going to hit 30 minutes of forehands, 
but I'm not just going to focus on, okay, exactly the same swings on every forehand and exactly the same ball. What I want to do is I want to try to learn to adapt. So maybe I'm going to hit three minutes of slice forehands. Then I'm going to hit three minutes of very, very heavy topspin forehands. Then I'm going to hit three minutes of high forehands. Then I'm going to hit three minutes of attacking forehands. Then I'm going to hit three minutes trying to hit angles with my forehand. So the idea is to really work on everything that I'm going to need in the match. If you do that, your tennis will go to the next level. So, yes, that is very clear, but to make it even clearer, what I have come up is five different ground stroke variations that you need to practice every day in order to really take your game to the next level. Your first goal should really to start feeling comfortable with topspin because these ground stroke variations are going to be a lot more effective if you can hit them with topspin. You can practice them with slice or you can practice them hitting the ball flat but they are going to be a lot more effective with topspin. So if you're not comfortable with topspin, I would suggest that that would be the first thing that you should really practice. You should really practice hitting a flat ball, one with a little bit of topspin, then one with a lot of topspin. And then once you feel comfortable with that, then work on these five variations. What are these variations? Well, the first thing that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to hit consistently at a good pace. What does that mean? That means that to me, I use the number eight. I need to make eight balls in a row. That is my consistency. That is what I'm shooting for. Why eight balls and not 20 balls? Well, because if I shoot for 20 or 50 balls, I am going to have to slow down my swing to be able to achieve that. What I want to do is I want to try to find that thin line on every practice to where I'm pushing myself to hit the ball hard, but I'm still consistent. So if I am trying to rally with somebody and missing every third ball, then I need to do something different. So I'm going to try to hit maybe with more spin. I'm going to try to maybe slow the ball down. So I got to figure out a way to get at least eight. That should be my goal. And every practice is going to be different. Some days I'm going to feel great hitting the ball fast and getting eight, no problem. And some days I'm going to struggle. So I have to adjust. So that would be a neutral shot, a shot that I can go deep, high over the net, keep my opponent from attacking me, and tr be consistent hitting at least eight balls in a row. So that is your neutral shot. You need to be working on that every day. Then you need to be working on changing the height of the ball. Why the, changing the height of the ball? Because I'm, when I'm defensive, I'm going to have to hit high. When I'm backing up, I'm going to have to hit high. If somebody comes to the net, I'm going to have to hit high. I need to be able to vary that height of the ball. So that is the second shot that you need to work on. Lifting shots, varying the height of the ball. The third shot that you should work on is a dipping shot. That means a ball that is short that I'm going to use when I'm inside the court and want to attack. I'm going to hit that dipping shot because if I hit my regular shot, it's going to go way out. I am also going to use it to hit angles or if somebody comes to the net to pass them. It's a ball that has, usually if I use, hit it with top spin, it's going to have a lot of spin. It's going to go lower the net and it's going to land short. So when I'm practicing, I want to practice hitting the ball at different lengths on the court, dipping shots. Then I would like to be able to hit off the shoulder shots. That shot I'm going to use to return a kick serve, for instance, or to step into the court and attack a ball that is short and it's high. I'm going to try to hit that shot with less top spin, so I'm going to hit it flatter because I want to hit some pace on the ball. I want to force the opponent. So I want to feel comfortable hitting the ball up here. A lot of players feel very comfortable hitting the ball here and so they're backing up every time to be able to hit it there as opposed to practicing hitting the ball high. It is very important to be able to hit that shot. 
And finally, my fifth shot variation would be to be able to hit the ball with very little backswing, just blocking it back. I am going to use that shot when the ball is coming fast and I cannot back up off the bounce. I am going to use that shot as I come in to volley and they hit a low shot to me. And also I'm going to use that shot to return serves. I just no backswing, blocking the ball. So if you practice those five variations on the ground strokes every time that you're on the court, you're going to be prepared for a match because the neutral shot you're going to use to build the point, to keep the opponent from attacking you, to be consistent, to move them around, to work for an opportunity, for a short ball. Once you get the short ball, then you're, if it's low, you're going to use the dipping shot to open up the court to attack. If it's high, you're going to use the shoulder level shot. You're going to use the lifting shot when you're being on defense and you have to hit a high spinny deep ball so that you get back to neutral and uh, you are going to use that dipping shot to open the court. So basically neutral shot, build a point, shoulder level shot when you can attack, lifting shots anytime that are, you're on defense or changing the pace of the, the ball, dipping shots for passing shots, approach shots, uh, opening angles and then blocking shots to control the pace of the opponent. When you're working on your game you can rally, let's say I'm gonna work on my backhand, so how would you practice this? I'm gonna work on my backhand so I'm gonna work on my neutral shot for a while. I'm gonna be consistent and I'm gonna try to accelerate at least get eight balls deep into the court there. Okay, now let's change it up. So now let's work on our lifting shot. So we're both gonna hit nice and high balls. Now, one of us is maybe gonna hit a neutral shot. The other one is going to hit a low, a medium, and a high ball. One of us hits a neutral shot. The other one hits a short angle, medium angle, and a deep ball. Let's practice both our no backswing shots, off the bounce. So we're both stepping in the court and working on that shot. So you can practice those 30 minutes of the shot that you want, but if you think about these five variations, you're gonna have everything pretty much covered. So that is how you build stroke flexibility. That is exactly what you need to do to, to be able to receive any ball that comes to you and hit it back with the characteristics that you want. And that is where technique really supports the strategy of the game. And that is how you're going to be able to implement the strategy that you want. A lot of times uh, I tell somebody, okay, when you're under attack, hit the ball high and deep. And they know what to do, but they really haven't practiced doing that. So they really cannot do that. Or when somebody comes to the net and the ball is low, just dip it with a lot of spin so that it keep, keeps it low and they cannot do anything. In theory, they know what they need to be doing, but they really haven't practiced. They have been focusing way too much on how to hit the ball and not what they want to do with the ball. The secret to success is figuring out what I want to do with the ball and then work technically on being able to do that enjoy playing singles and would like to understand the game a lot better, take a look at our Singles Tactic Masterclass. You will learn how to play percentage tennis. That means hitting the right shot at the right time. Stop second guessing yourself. I should have come to the net. I should have stayed back. I should have just got the ball in. Learn about Singles Tactic. Understand the game and bring your game to a whole new level.